A year before the diagnosis on our children, a place called Helen House had opened in Oxford. That was the world's first children's hospice. And so we gave them a ring to see if they would help us. And they said, you're the, exactly the family, sort of family we would like to help. Come up and bring your children and we'll also look after you because we know that you're pretty exhausted as well. We went up to Oxford and we went up about four or five times a year to recharge our batteries. Our children were looked after immaculately and we were able to relax. Gradually what we noticed was that Helen House was becoming oversubscribed. And there were also many families who were journeying up from the southwest of England. And so I think it was in 1989 or 1990, I woke up in the middle of the night and said to Jill, I think we should build a children's hospice in the southwest of England for the children of this region. And she quite wisely said, I think you just better go back to sleep, which is what I did. But the idea didn't go away. Eddie and Jill launched the appeal from their home a year later and with much volunteer help, travelled through Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, Bristol, Bath and Gloucestershire, campaigning for funding. Eventually, in 1993, building work started on Little Bridge House. Children's hospice work is always tinged with sadness and there is a huge personal sadness from my point of view in that our two eldest children, Kate and Tom, are no longer alive. But also my dear wife Jill is no longer alive. She put her heart and soul and effort in, I think, making Children's Hospice South West what it is today. But she sadly lost her battle with cancer in 2004. But her legacy lives on in the fantastic care offered here at Little Bridge House.